guys, this is Dr. Quads, and as you can see here, I have my handy dandy long range antenna tester. What this is gonna be used for is testing the Air 03 unit. But let me let you know what's going on. First, we're gonna be testing the DJI original antenna versus the Maple Wireless Mjolnir Pro. We'll also then switch over to the Mjolnir Pro and see if there's any performance gain there. The next thing we'll be testing is, of course, the aftermarket third party antennas. Maple Wireless, Foxeer, and of course, the Rush Cherry 2. This is the Foxeer Lollipop 4 Plus. This is, of course, the standard Maple Wireless they've been making for a while. They're really great antennas. I know that for sure, but I'm also interested to see how these stack up against them. So we'll see if we can find a king amongst these right here, or maybe the DJI Air Unit 03's antenna is just as good as these. That will be surprising. Now the reason we're at a mall is because I want to be testing this in the perfect environment for that, which is the actual environment that me as a, a FPV filmmaker mostly does his work in. Something like a mall. Flying through a mall, there's lots of stuff in the way, there's bounce paths everywhere. I'm not so much a long range flyer, so this, don't consider this to be some sort of long range test. Well guys, without further ado, let's get in the mall and let's go test these things right now. So for this first test, I wanted to see the difference between the Mjolnir Pros and the stock DJI faceplate antennas, with of course the stock DJI 03 antenna. It looks like the stock antennas have a stronger connection on that first bend, however it becomes quickly apparent that when the signal is stressed to the limit, the Mjolnir Pros will really win out against the DJI stock antennas. And I think that comes down to the fact that they're just a better antenna. However, I think the reason why the DJI stock faceplate antennas did better in the beginning was because of their omnidirectional nature as I am walking around in a giant big circle and so you're not really getting the benefit of a directional antenna as much. This next round of testing is going to be a lot more interesting to some people because it's going to be comparing the various different third-party antennas for the DJI 03. It's quite clear that these third-party antennas are better than the stock DJI 03 antenna. However, it's worth noting the difference is not as great as it was with the Vista and the original Air Unit's stock antennas. Those antennas were garbage and jumping over to a third-party antenna was a huge leap in performance. The Maple Wireless and the Fox Ears seem to be neck and neck all day. Uh, and do remember, take this all with a grain of salt because if I'm standing in a slightly different position or the video is not perfectly synced up with my location, or of course, if I'm holding the rig higher or lower, it's gonna greatly affect the signal. So you can't necessarily pause the video and say, oh, this one has 5.1 megabits and this one has 4.9, so this one's better. I would say more try to look at the overall rather than just one particular moment. The rushes though did seem to struggle quite heavily in this particular test so if you're flying a lot of multi-pathing i would not recommend the rushes the fox ears seem to slightly come ahead of the maple wirelesses in the beginning portion of that difficult section but the maple wirelesses seem to have a lot longer of a drop off which is very desirable because you want to have as much warning as possible that you're about to lose signal and rather than just cutting out immediately Seeing the difference between a left-hand CP and a right-hand CP versus two right-hand CP antennas. It doesn't really matter though, because remember that the Mjolnir Pro has left-hand and right-hand CP patches on the faceplate, so you're already cross-polarized, but is there some sort of benefit by using different setups? I don't think there was really much of a difference. It seemed like the left-hand and the right-hand performed a little bit better. However, the drop-off seemed to be a little bit faster with the left-hand and right-hand. Now do remember, take that with a grain of salt, as slight differences in my body's position or height of holding the rig would greatly affect in these moments where the signal is extremely stressed. I don't feel like there is much conclusion uh, at to whether you should use one left hand and one right hand or just use both the same. In a high bounce path environment where your direct line of sight is not gonna be your main source of connection, your Mirna Pro faceplate already has a cross polarization there. So I think that's why we're seeing not much of a difference. Now this is the test that really shook things up and that is to see the difference with the Mjolnir on the DJI 03 and then of course the faceplate being the, the stock antennas. Surprisingly, the entire day, the strongest and furthest signal that I got was with the Maple Wireless left hand and right hand on the DJI 03, but the faceplate being the stock DJI antennas. And I think the reason for that is, is the fact that the Mjolnir Pros are patch antennas, so they do benefit greatly from a directional approach, whereas the 
uh, whereas the stock DJI antennas are omnidirectional. And in this particular case, it's entirely omnidirectional. It's entirely bounce path and walking in a big circle. So I think that's why we saw that. So if you're flying in this particular situation, yeah, uh, then maybe you should be using the stock antennas. Max power with the O3 air unit. Take the red pill, take the blue pill, take the red pill, take the blue pill, take the red pill, take the blue pill, take the red pill, take the blue pill.